As promised, here's examples for all of those vocabulary words. Uh, this is an old uh, set of data from a fishing project that you will be given a chance to do at the end of the unit using some information from uh, an old Nintendo fishing game that I like to play from time to time. Uh, so this is all data collected from, I think this was my third block last year, uh, 2018 to 2019. Uh, they got to play the game in class and caught these fish and converted their sizes into inches. Uh, and then they had to find all of those data points for uh, those fish, uh, given their sizes. So yes, all of these fish off to the left, these are real fish. If you want later, uh, after, all, after all of this, if you wanted to look up some of those fish and find out how normal those sizes are for them, you can do that later. But for now, we're going to get started. Uh, first of all, whenever you are given a set of data, it's always a good idea to rewrite them from least to greatest. It's going to help with finding the mean and the quartiles, which means it's also going to help with the inner quartile range. And it'll kind of help you identify any repeating numbers, and it'll certainly help you find the smallest and largest number. So, from least to greatest, uh, the smallest fish was the long-nosed hawkfish. Uh, after that would be the clownfish. Uh, so, same fish as Nemo. Uh, after that is the horse mackerel. Uh, after that, the next largest fish is the Moorish idol. Uh, if you're curious, that is the same fish as uh, Gil from Finding Nemo. Uh, we've got the royal angelfish and the grass puffer fish and the blue tang, which is the same species as Dory. So all three of them were about 10 inches long. Next, we've got the blotchy siago, or silago, I might be saying it wrong. But that's 11 inches long. Next, we have the blue face angel face angel fish uh, then it comes the multicolor fin rainbow fish then the next largest fish so we got 13 inches no 14 no 15 no 16 looks like 17 is the next largest with the emperor angel fish 17 19 the flounder would be next so getting into some pretty big fish, uh, and the last three, I actually missed one, the Demon Stinger uh, should have gone back here, so let me go back here and fix that. So we got a 16, 17, then we have a 19, 16, 17, then 19. Uh, then we have the Sea Eel and Sea Bass. 25 inches long and 29 inches long, so nearly three feet long. Now let's see, I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I should have 15 numbers down here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15 numbers, so I'm all set. This information over here I don't really need, but I'm not going to cross it out now because I need it for later. Uh, for starters, let's go ahead and find the range. That's going to be the largest number and the smallest number taken away from each other. So we're just going to subtract 29 minus 5. So 29 minus 5, that's going to give me 24. That's my range, 24. Next up, we can identify the mode, any number that repeats more than anything else. 10. 10 repeats three times, no other number does that. So the mode is 10. Something you should know, mode is the only one of these that can have either more than one answer or no answer at all. So you can have multiple modes. If there were, say, three tens and three thirteens, then our answer would be 10 and 13. Uh, enough of that. Next, let's go ahead and find the median since we have all these in order. Uh, if you are finding median, the easiest way to do that is to get a light colored pen or pencil 
uh, and just cross out gently as you go uh, the biggest number and the smallest number. So biggest, smallest. The reason we use a light colored pencil is so that we can still see what we have written. So if you go blotting everything out with marker, you won't be able to read what those numbers were again, and you're going to have to rewrite them when it's time to do the quartiles. So biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, big, small, big, small. And it just kind of repeats over and over until eventually there's only one number left in the middle, which is 11. 11 is going to be my median. So I can go ahead and fill that in into my table. My median for this was 11. While I'm here, I can do my quartiles. Uh, if you check your notes, the quartiles are just the medians of one section of data. Our median is our separator. So we can cover up our top half. And for quartile one, we are finding the middle of these numbers. Now, once again, you use a light colored pencil or uh, highlighter. So I used yellow for overall. I'm going to use orange for finding my quartiles. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cross out the largest number, then the smallest, largest, smallest, largest, smallest. And my lower quartile, or quartile 1, is going to be 9. My upper quartile, again, we cover up the first half, and now we're just going to work on the second half. Biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest, biggest, smallest. And the one that's left is quartile 3. So 17. Uh, one important thing I should mention, if you are ever finding the quartiles or median and you have two numbers that are sharing the middle, then you would have to find the mean of those two numbers. So if I, my two numbers in between were 10 and 11, for example, then what I would do is I would add 10 plus 11 and then divide that by 2, and that would give me my real median. We got lucky here and we had a perfectly odd number of data points, so we don't have that issue. While we have our quartiles, we can go ahead and fill in our IQR, inner quartile range. Inner quartile range is just quartile 3 minus quartile 1. 17 minus 9. And that's going to give us, I believe, what is that? That's going to give us 8. So, that leaves us with 8, and we have basically everything already done for this. Uh, one thing you should notice as we work in statistics is that nothing in statistics is particularly hard. It just all takes time. Uh, so the last two, you notice we just did all of those and it took less than 10 minutes. Mean and mean absolute deviation are going to take that whole amount of time. Uh, they are both by far the largest sections. So lucky for us, this is a calculator active unit. You're going to want to take advantage of that. It can be done without a calculator, but given the type of math we're going to be doing, you shouldn't try to strain yourself to do it all by hand. A lot of room for error. Step one for the mean, add everything. So we do 13 plus 16 plus 29 plus 10 plus 25 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 11 plus 19 plus 9 plus 7 plus 17 plus 5 plus 10. And we get 210. Now that number in and of itself is useless to us. We don't care. What we're supposed to do next, after we add everything, is we divide by however many data points we have. Uh, I counted earlier, and I know we have 15 fish. So I will divide by 15. And that gave me a nice round 13.4. So, my answer for my mean, 13.4. Something that you should know, if you get an answer that has a repeating decimal that continues on, uh, a good rule of thumb is to round to the nearest hundredth or the nearest tenth. So, now for the hard part. 
all of that was easy. All of that was quick. Uh, mean absolute deviation. This part stinks. Uh, part one for mean absolute deviation, and this is the part that takes a while, you have to find the difference between the mean and every single one of those numbers. And that's going to take some time, especially seeing as we have a decimal there. So, uh, a little trick that you can use, if all you're doing is finding distance, positives and negatives don't matter. So I can do just go straight down the list and do 13.4 minus everything. So 13.4 minus 13 for the first fish. So my deviation, matter of fact, draw a blue line here, and I will call this side my deviation. These are how far those points differ from my mean. So my first fish is 0 0.4 inches deviation. Next I do 13.4 minus 16. Even though that says negative 2.6, I can use absolute value since all I'm doing is finding distance from 13.4 to 16. So I'm just going to write it's a positive 2.6 because that's the distance. And I'm going to continue on the rest of this entire table. Uh, just finding the difference between all of these. And you might start to notice a pattern as we go with what these answers are all going to be. So I'm going to continue on a little quieter, uh, but see if you notice a pattern or a trend about the answers, because there should be something that stands out to you. Minus 8 gives me 5.4. 13.4 minus 10 gives me 3.4. Uh, 13.4 minus 12 is 1.4, 13.4 minus 11 is 2.4, 13.4 minus 19 is 5.6, uh, 13.4 minus 9 is 4.4, 13.4 minus 7 is 6.4, 13.4 minus 17 is 3.6, 13.4 minus 5 is 8.4. 13.4 minus 10 is 3.4. One thing you might have noticed is all of my answers are either going to end in 0.4 or 0.6. That is normal. Uh, if your answer, uh, if 13.4 was smaller than this number, you would end up with 0.6. The reason being is you can write that off, uh, off to the side or whatever and just write it out by hand a couple of those examples and you'll start to see why it has to do with borrowing from that zero this is not my mean absolute deviation though there's an yet another blasted step and this is why i keep saying it takes a long time it's not hard because you get to use a calculator it just takes an obnoxious amount of time the final step for mean absolute deviation is you now have to find the mean of your deviation uh, so we're going to add all 15 of those decimals up. So we have 0 0.4 plus 2.6 plus 15.6 plus 3.4 plus 11.6 plus 5.4 plus 3.4 plus 1.4 plus 2.4 plus 5.6 plus 4.4 plus 6.4. Uh, let's see, where am I at here? Oh, I kind of lost track. I think I'm at plus 3.6, plus 8.4, plus 3.4. So I added everything up and I got 78. I now have to divide that by my number of data points. So divided by 15 data points. And my mean absolute deviation is 5.2. So what this set of data tells me about this, these fish is it tells me on average, the mean, uh, on average, these fish are all somewhere in the ballpark of 13.4 inches long, so a little more than a foot. Uh, the median is 11. What that tells me is half of all the fish in this area are more than 11 and half are less than 11. Mode, 10 inches. This tells me that the most common fish, if I were to catch two fish in a row, they're most likely going to be ten, about 10 inches. 
my range, how much of a difference there is. There's a 24 or 2 foot difference between my smallest fish that I could catch and my biggest fish. So there's a huge uh, variation, variation there. For quartile 1, uh, 9 inches, that means that 25% of all my fish are smaller than 9 inches. 17 for my quartile 3, that tells me that 25% of my fish are bigger than 17 inches. Uh, inner quartile range uh, is 8. That tells me that between uh, my lower quartile, I can expect if I catch a 9 inch fish that I'm not usually not going to get a fish uh, more than 8 inches long, larger than that. Mean absolute deviation, that tells me how likely or how spread out my fish are or how likely I am to catch a fish that is close to 13.4. The smaller that number is, that means your data is going to be very tight. It's going to be very small and condensed. When that number gets bigger and bigger, it means your data gets more spread out. If all of your numbers are really close to 13.4, there's not a lot of deviation or your numbers aren't spread out or cluster or they're clustering more and you have less variation. So that is how all of these are used. And well, that's, that's basically it. Uh, there will be more coming. Bye-bye.